Hello and welcome back to Matt's Tech Parade. Today we're going to be looking at DaVinci Resolve. I know a lot of people that watch my channel use Blender for video editing because I have a whole series on it and it's pretty much the most popular videos on my channel. However, DaVinci Resolve is actually made for making videos. Okay, so we're going to launch it. I'm going to walk you through basically all the processes I typically use. This is not an all-inclusive tutorial because, well, first of all, I'm not going through the install, so you got to handle that yourself, but it's pretty straightforward. Download unpack install so you'll get this it'll be blank at first this is just stuff i've worked on in the past a lot of random stuff let's go over the stuff here we've got a slider bar we got this list view and there's this special information which gives you more data a little sort order and if you're connecting to a database somewhere we'll be pressing these buttons over here collapse that back down we're just going to do a new project so we click on this untitled project or you can go to new project down here you can also make folders and uh, we're just going to do new project let's press this new project button we'll leave it as it is untitled project one and as we can see davinci does let us know when there's a new version 17.3 is available so i'm going to pause the video and go grab 17.3 and i'll be right back excellent excellent the only thing you really need to know about this setup is I left everything default. So everything is just, just where default would go. All right, so we've got the new version installed and we're going to launch it. It's just a little what's new in DaVinci Resolve. So uh, that's kind of cool. They're always fixing stuff. Excellent. Now we're back to the normal startup. And here we are back at a project. We're just going to open project one because that's the one we already started. And here we have a blank interface. So in this uh, default interface, well, there's a lot of stuff going on. Let's go over it quickly. Of course, you got a standard menu bar at the top that you see on pretty much every piece of software these days. And then we've got this little strip bar here that basically changes this top left area. And you can see there's media pool for importing things, sync bin, which I've never used, transitions, and audio transitions too, so additional tabs here for more stuff titles and it looks like we can favorite them with the star effects and we have all kinds of uh, effects here and down here we have our timeline and cutting area this is controlled by this down here right now we're on cut there's also edit which goes into a whole new mode the larger sidebar here and it has some different options on the the cutting so these are sort of similar i've noticed the cut and edit Cut is uh, more intended for slicing up your clip only. Edit's more for adding things in, but you, there's no reason you can't add stuff in during the cut. So I don't. It's sort of an odd thing to me, but it's that's just the way it is. I switch between them as needed. Typically, Fusion allows you to make custom properties on things. It's a little more advanced. We might talk about it more later, but today it's not really too relevant for the basics. Color is basically for color grading your clips. A cool tool to have available. Fairlight is all about controlling your audio and doing stuff with audio. This is also something we'll look at occasionally too, but probably not today as uh, the basics will be handled mostly in the importing and basic cutting and how to render a video. And I will do follow-ups to cover the rest of the stuff. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do now that we're used to the uh, interface a little bit is bring in some media that we would like to edit. You can edit pretty much anything you want, audio, video, and images. Go to your file explorer, go find some stuff. I've got a place on one of my drives for recordings, rendered, and a bunch of other stuff, created images, created sounds, and uh, stuff that's open. You can organize however you want. I'm just going to go into my recordings. So we're going to drag this in and right away it asks us if we want to change the project frame rate. It tries to match uh, what you're recording at. So it does try to help you out with that. So you can bring in everything you want to work with. It's the point here. I'm just dragging them random clips. If you only have one, that's fine too. Let's bring in some images to play around with too. Bring in audio. Here's a bunch. I'll just drag them all in. And the reality is you don't actually need to use this import like ever because while you're working in your timeline, you can just drag stuff in as you need it. So when you drag something into this working area, it creates a very special media pool entry called timeline and this timeline is what you actually edit so in the cut phase you basically hit control slash or right click and go to split anywhere you want uh, control backslash the slash above enter does a cut in this and spacebar plays there's a obviously very loud audio there so I'm gonna actually mute the audio so we're gonna go over here to uh, audio well there's some master audio that we can actually edit 
So if we go over to edit, we'll see in our mixer over here, we have audio one and the bus. If you turn the bus all the way down, that's gonna turn off your sound entirely. If you turn audio one down, that's gonna turn off the audio and audio one. You can also hit mute track over here. So when you're in this cut mode and you click on something that you've uh, sliced around and press the backspace key, it will remove it and bring back your uh, timeline to match. So if we wanna just cut, say the beginning, uh, we can make a cut over here, control slash, press the back base key and there we go and then you can uh, hit this fast review to zoom on through at a higher speed than normal which is doing it doesn't seem a whole lot faster there it goes now it's speeding up and you can hit it again you now wait till you get to like an exciting part or whatever if you don't want to go to your mouse and have to click these uh, areas you can hold control and press the left and right arrow keys and it'll change what is selected i guess you have to click one to start but then you can highlight the one you want so you can work with all your keyboard once you get used to the hot keys and you can fly through this using only your keyboard so it might be a good idea at this point to study the hotkeys do some cuts go over to edit after doing some cuts and go to your media pool drag in some other stuff play around with these because audio goes down below video goes up above you'll get scroll bars over here once you've got to get a bunch of stuff going on a bunch of layers uh, play play around with the uh, effects library and the titles and the transitions you just drag transitions right onto any cut area titles it just gives you a bunch of different text some of these are going to be paywalled maybe uh, especially once you get to effects a lot of these are paywalled and you'll get this message saying you need to buy davinci so when you're using this in this free version you don't get all their special designed effects but you still do get all the core stuff you need to edit videos and as you can see at this point there's a lot of stuff here but I've kind of tried to go over where to find the basics. It's definitely not everything. There's definitely a ton of stuff I didn't go over. But at this point, you should feel pretty comfortable uh, clicking around on your own and doing some basic cuts. So we're going to hop right on a little further. I mean, let me just layer a few things real quick. Let's put in some scroll text at the beginning. Now you'll see it's scroll title. You have to go to the inspector and the inspector is specifications or details on whatever you're currently editing. So if you click something it'll switch to that you do have to click it for the inspector to be correct so watch out for that sometimes you'll drag something in start editing and then realize oh i'm editing the wrong thing we change the scroll title just i don't know whatever you want and there's all kinds of formatting options drop shadow background stuff you can play around with whatever you want to do here we'll do some random random things and then maybe we'll make a few more cuts this area looks a little bit quiet let's cut it so you can do the same cut effects while you're in edit but when you press the backspace button well you do need to make sure you select the audio with it both the audio and the video and then have some more things here like snapping and link sections that links the audio and the video so if you want to make sure you select both you keep it linked if you want to split you can unlink and then you can edit one or the other careful timing you can mess up your timing but maybe you don't need the audio because you're just using it as like a something else you decide but hitting backspace leaves this space, this gap here. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. But hitting the delete key, you know, the one that's next to insert and end on your keyboard, that delete key will pull things back. Now you can also, if you hover over, you'll see you get this little special side rail thing. At that point, you can click and drag. And you can do it on any of these clips. It does have snapping, unless you unsnap by pressing end or toggling this little area. There's also some stuff over here you can play around with. I use this one, the blade mode. It basically just makes cuts wherever you click. Slice it up with the blade mode. So you can then go back to your cursor, selection mode with A, and click on maybe one section that you don't actually want. And B, go back to blade mode. This is just another way of cutting. A to select, delete, blade, cut, 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 select, a oh and now i have hit the end key accidentally so the end key takes you to the end if you want to go back to where you were and press uh i don't know good luck i guess you just need to zoom out with this and go back to where you were basically so i want to select and delete just deleting these silent parts with the uh pullback thing I, I can't remember what that's called where it uh goes back all right i'm just gonna make a few more cuts here where it keeps the uh clip line without the blank space so if I press the backspace key, it doesn't do that, you see? All right, so backspace doesn't, and you don't always want it to do that because maybe you have something else going on. Let's do a few more cuts real quick. But if you have all these gaps, it can be a real pain to go in and be like, uh, snap that one over, snap that one over, that one. Oops, and then I'll leave combined together. 
So that can be a real pain. But what you can do is you click somewhere where you have nothing selected. So click this blank area, make sure there's nothing in your inspector, go up to edit, and then delete gaps. And this will delete all the gaps. Now I'm gonna hit undo and show you what happens if you do have something selected. Say I have this selected. And now I go to delete gaps. Does nothing, does absolutely nothing. So that's why you have to select nothing. Uh, because if you have something selected, I think it only deletes the gaps in that clip. Let's do a test. I think maybe if we go like this and then hit delete gaps, maybe it'll get rid of the ones, yeah, the ones within the selection. So you either have to select everything or select nothing or only select the area you want to delete gaps from. And this box select, of course, is just click and drag. So that's another way to clear up your gaps if you have not been pressing the delete key all the time. Maybe you're only doing backspace some of the time, like so and then you want to like clear that up later. There we go. So maybe we want a little outro or something or some things, some effects within here. So what you can do is you just click on one of these clips, right? And now we go up to effects library and there's all kinds of stuff in here. You can put effects over from over here and drag on an adjustment clip, fusion composition. You can put any of these titles with it if you want. So now this clip here, this is kind of a long clip. Let me do a shorter one. So you can drag stuff all over the top of this like that and do whatever you want. But you can also edit these clips directly. And there's some, there's several ways of doing this. So you select it and you can go over here to this drop down and there's crop, zoom, overlay, fusion. Uh, the, the transform is very commonly used. That's the one that just does a, a hard zoom, rotate. So you can do whatever you want there. Let's do that. So that section will just go boom sideways. It's kind of a weird effect. And if we want to drop in any of these fades at any time, we can. Or uh, transitions. There's all these video transitions that automate things. There's quite a few of them. Let's do a slice push on this one. So another thing you can do is with this double hover, you'll see you got the bars on the both sides of the arrows on both sides is you can click it and move where this cut is. So maybe you want to find just that and do that. So that is another really little handy tip. It's just to get that double hover and fine adjust where your cuts are if you want. Ah, it's a thing of beauty sometimes. So I'm just randomly editing here, clearly. Uh, normally when you're editing, you're probably gonna go through this meticulously and, and do things as you want. So on any of these clips, you can also do a manual fade in and fade out by just clicking on these little, I don't know, nodes on the end of a clip and just pulling it and that controls a fade. So if we bring our playhead here, we'll see that this is gonna fade out. And usually you wanna adjust accordingly so that we could do like a fade out and a fade in to the next clip type of thing. All right, so let's get to the important part of delivering your product. All right, we've gotten this far. Maybe we're ready to deliver. There might be more stuff you wanna do let me know down below. We'll make some follow-up videos. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit deliver. And this is the all-important render area. What you can do here is you can mark in and mark out. Now this is where your video starts and where your video ends. So that can be important. Sometimes you'll say like, the, this intro thing is really not good. Let me just start right here. So boom. Or maybe I just want to render a small section to show somebody. Maybe it's like, hey guys, ch check this out. What do you think of this part? Mark in, mark out. And then you can just render that section. So that's how you control which section is rendering. Uh, but let's go back to entire timeline. So you got all these options up here. This is where you set up how you want it to export. You know, there's so many options from audio only, Pro Tools, generic, Twitter, to YouTube. If you're going to YouTube, you click YouTube. It gives you the default options. Go on to Vimeo, click that. You know, you can probably find a good option for yourself here for what is going to work for you. So let's go to YouTube and give it a file name, give it a location. I'm gonna choose my render folder, rendered, save. Give it a file name. I'm just gonna ASDF this one and you probably wanna keep this resolution and frame rate and all this stuff as it is. Now you can log in and like have this stuff auto upload to YouTube. I don't do that. I just manually do that later. But then all you do is you click add to render queue and then render all over here. So this is your render queue. So you can actually set up multiple things to render. You can say like, hey, let's, uh, we're gonna, Let's set this one up, add that one. So you can have like little multiple mini P 
pieces if you want and render them all. So if we click render all, it's actually going to start rendering and it tells you how long, which can vary greatly. I'm going to stop it, but basically you're going to find it in whatever folder you specified here once it's all done. And that's pretty much it. All right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, this helps you get started with DaVinci Resolve 17.3. My name's Matt been watching uh, Matt's crab shack of code and technology and stuff. If you want to support further, there is a Patreon down below and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Leave comments. Let me know what I uh, should show next, because there's, there's a lot of stuff. I was feeling like maybe I should talk more about audio or about importing these pictures. But we can do that next time. I'll see you guys in that next time area.